Hello! It's the terrifying polystyrene head, which can mean only one thing. It's time to review some headphones! Hooray! Says somebody in the audience who particularly likes headphones for some reason. And today's headphones are... The Meze Classic 88s. Mmm, shiny black box. Tasteful photography. You'll notice they do have a certain charm to them, don't they? Made by Antonio Meze, who is a man who makes headphones. Box says very little. But on the back, we learn. Individually handcrafted ebony wood enclosure reproducing crisp but warm natural sound. Dedicated 50mm neodymium drivers. I have very little understanding of what that means. Detachable TPE cable. I know exactly what that means. Passive noise isolation. What that means is they've got cushions on them. Compatible with iPhone, Blackberry, iPod, blah, blah, blah. Of course it's compatible with everything. They're just a pair of headphones. They're compatible with everything except cats and certain breeds of dog. Anyway, I don't care about all that. If you do... Pause and read that. There we are, that'll be some exciting for you. I just want to see if they're pretty. Mmm, pretty. Well, you'll be pleased to see they're very carefully wrapped up so they don't get smashed bits in the post or however they are delivered to you. Also, gold. Always believe in your soul. And yes, you would expect that from a pair of expensive headphones. Here they are in all their ebony wood glory. And look, it is detachable. What more could you ask for? There's even a bit of wood on the end just to show you how woody they are. Look, wood. There's enough lacquer on those to uh, deflect a tank blast, I think. But something you'll notice is they don't look like a big plasticky piece of shit, which is uh, somewhat different to most of the premium headphones you'll find on offer in the shops at the moment. Um, also, non-adjustable top. Instead, you get this sort of weird shock mount that sits on your head. It's quite comfortable. Um, well, very comfortable, actually, and seems quite effective. So well done for doing that. It's a bit different. Go on. On your head. Oh, yeah, she's enjoying that. Look. Dun, 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 dun. Face like that. I wonder what she's listening to. My Goldfield, I reckon. Just about to get into Moonlight Shadow. So what do they sound like then, which really is the only important thing? Well, other than the price, but we'll get to that. Um, they are, yeah, without a doubt, really, the best headphones I've ever used. It doesn't matter what you play through them, it tends to sound fantastic. Uh, the bass is beautiful, they're very warm sounding, it's still very crisp and clear. Um, they're so much better than everything else I've got, it's unbelievable. The headphones I normally use are actually another Meze pair, but a sort of small pair of fold-up ones, which I thought were pretty fantastic. Until I listen to these, and uh, they've ruined the other ones for me. Anyway, who cares what I think? Here's what Dan the sound engineer thinks, because I always ask his opinion on such matters, because that's his job. And he gave me a list of things that I don't really understand. Um, let me just skim through it for something that appears to be in English. Um, no distortion. Yes, that's important, I suppose. Very clearly defined. No muddiness. Oh, that's important, yeah. Um, Sounded slightly better after listening for a few hours. Um, well, I suppose they bed in or something. Must have been, I didn't notice that when he gave them back to me, but I am an ear idiot. Here's the important bit. He said, for the money, these are the best headphones he has ever seen. Also, excellent bass impact. I missed that bit. And the money is quite a bit. They're going to cost you slightly over £200 to have delivered. And flip me, that's expensive. But then, I suppose, for that price, you then have to compare them to Beats by Dre and those um, 50 cent ones I reviewed. And frankly, these don't so much as kill them as um, beat them to death and then piss all over their still twitching corpse. It beggars belief that you can buy those in the shops and not these, because these are so much better for pretty much the same money. So if you are going to spend about that much money on headphones, I would strongly recommend you buy some of these, unless you're really desperate to have a rapper's name on whatever it is you take home from the shops. And on a completely different note, I was given a pair of headphones free um, when I bought a mobile phone. An Angle and Curve pair. I've never heard of Angle and Curve, and hopefully I never will again. Just want to sort of contrast how crap headphones can look. Solid chrome effect plastic, fake screws. Well, I will say this for them, they do sound better than they look, but I think it would be impossible for them to sound worse than they look unless they just burst your eardrums when you turn the bastards on. Anyway, that's enough audio stuff. 
Here's a camera instead. From our friends at Speedo, who usually make things you uh, wrap around your genitals before you go swimming. Yes, the idea is this is an underwater camera. So it's got a big powerful flash and a lens. These are very important things when taking photographs underwater. In order to access it, you push this in here. And here's the bit where you put in the memory card. Just take standard uh, micro SD. In you go. And there's a USB slot, one of the types of mini USB, I don't know which one, micro USB type 7. It's the same one that Blackberries and um, Amazon Kindles use. One slightly worrying thing actually, I will mention while I'm talking about this, I did notice when you push this underwater you get a few air bubbles out here, and when I removed the uh, memory card after filming underwater it was slightly damp. That's probably not a good thing over time. Anyway, turn it on and really it's just a cheap digital camera, as you would expect. Look. Wow. It's like living in the future where you've got too many camcorders. And it just takes still photographs and technically will take video, but not very good video, to say the least. Um, you're talking 640 by 480 looks a bit poo. Say cheese. There you are. Oh, it didn't stay very long. Let's turn the flash on, for it is hideously bright. Go on, take a picture. Ah, might help if I force the flash on, since we're currently under quite powerful studio lights. And again! Hooray! It flashed that time, and the picture doesn't look much different to me. I can't tell what you can see through the viewfinder, because it's all gone squiff at this end. So, in order to test this, well, got to take some pictures underwater, and I had a perfect opportunity, because with this camera I could finally find out what was in the bubble bath of mystery. Fifteen years we've been wanting to know what's in this damn thing, and we've been too scared to put our hands in. The answer was, there are three things in the bubble bath of mystery. The first was an alien. The second was a toast rack. And we couldn't make out the third at first, um, but a bit of video shows that it appears to be a severed human foot. So if you're missing a foot, uh, drop us a line and we'll send that along to you. Yeah, so there you have it. Not exactly fantastic quality. And it cost 40 quid, and that was reduced, because I think these are selling these off as they're a no longer produced line. Hmm, quite a lot of money, but what alternative do you have if you want to go abroad on holiday or whatever and take some underwater photographs? Do you want to risk your existing camera in one of those awful plastic bags? Of course you don't, it'll get wet and go sparky and ruined. But yeah, if you want to take decent quality photos underwater you're going to have to spend considerably more. Such is life. And next we have this! <laughs> <laughs> oh god <sighs> bloody hell right next um it's a flat cardboard thing. Yes, welcome to Foldable.me, which was one of these things that was floating around on Kickstarter and actually made its money and now produces these. What happens is you go on their website and you fiddle around and create an avatar that looks like what you want it to look like. A bit like um, when you make a me on the Wii. Can't remember those. Um, yeah, but the difference is, for £7.50, yes, it really is that much, they will then print it onto this high quality and uh, rather nicely plasticky finished cardstock and send it to you. And then you can bring it to life. Pop me out, fold my scored edges, slot me together, and if you get stuck, there's a handy instructional video for idiots. Brilliant. Requires no ketchup, no scissors, and no spanner. Why? Why would you need a spanner to make something like this? And it's the first one as well, bizarre. I'm a finished foldable, lies a blank picture of a foldable. Um, yeah, well my first problem with this was look at the bloody face. That's the closest I could get to my facial hair at the time. And annoyingly, I've been on the site again afterwards and they now seem to have added a sort of uh, vaguely goatee style beard. But at the time, the closest was this 70s porn style look, which is a bit depressing. Anyway, I suppose I'm now going to have to actually put this together, aren't I? Right. Whoa. And there we have it. Chow, buck chow, buck chow, buck chow, buck chow. I have come to fix the washing machine. Yes, um, it's all a bit 
square and Minecrafty, and kind of looks like a square version of a South Park character in a way. And it's all very nice. I mean, you're not going to be uh, printing anything as quality as that at home unless you've got some weird semi-laminating moon printer or something. And it all goes together easily, and indeed you don't need a spanner. Um, but I can't help thinking you'll actually just buy it, put it down somewhere and think, bloody hell, I just spent £7.50 on that, or $12, as is the American equivalent if you buy it in the States. Um, so yeah, I don't know, it isn't half the fun anyway, just kind of getting a template off the internet and printing it off after fiddling with it yourself. I don't know, just seems a bit pricey to me, but if you do need a particularly high quality um, papercraft version of somebody um, to use in your strange Minecraft voodoo, look no further. Satisfying. Right, as a last thing, the company that I bought this off is inexplicably called... Um, hang on, I can't remember. It's written on the side of the bag. Advanced MP3 players. And they also do something which intrigued me, called a bag of crap. Where essentially you give them an amount of money, and they fill a bag with stuff. At random. This is said bag. I went for the £15 option because I wanted to waste £15 and I thought it may make something interesting on video. So what do you get, or what did I get, because I think it is pretty much random, in the £15 bag of crap? The answer of course is items they can't sell normally. Let's see what those are, shall we? There's a headphone bag, I think it is, with Marley written on, which is another one of these designer headphone bands. So. That's good. You could, uh, if somebody's got a particularly small head, you could uh, garrote them with that as well, which is quite nice. And it would also muffle their screams slightly, so that could be handy. Um, we've also got LCD protective film for a Galaxy Note. Yeah, thanks lads, that's going to be well useful. Um, an adapter plug for, I think, European to UK. Well, I know the UK bit, just not sure about the other. That's... Um, Nice, thank you for that. Uh, ah, here's the meat of the pudding. A pair of Philips portable speakers. I've actually used a pair of these before and they were quite good. Um, so, hmm, I think they hmm, were worth about £10, I would have said to me. So, hmm, still not quite made back the £15. But don't worry, because there is one more item. USB decoration kit birthday. Luminescent birthday computer decor. Oh great, you can make your work computer look like a big flashing pile of shite. With this from Dream Cheeky. Yeah, I'll be sure to do that. What is this actually like inside the... Oh blimey, oh god. It's just all cardboard and toot. Come on, you know you want to come out. Well maybe you don't actually because it's strapped in. There we go. Well, we've got um, a happy birthday bit of cardboard that says happy birthday and you can fold it together and it stick it to things. Wow, best birthday together already. Oh, there's a letter. Does it tell you how much you've been ripped off? Nope, it tells you how to make a pointed hat. Yes, I think we can probably work that out ourselves. There we are. Happy birthday that you can't see because it's off the camera. Um, a birthday mouse mat. It's just a shiny bit of cardboard stuck to a bit of rubber. And this absolute toot, where presumably you plug that into a USB port. And these all light up, and then the bloke from IT comes around and tells you off for plugging them in. Well, that was worth £15. No, it fucking wasn't. <laughs>